Hey there, it's Chelsea from Little Mountain Ranch, and today we're gonna plant some annuals. So the difference between an annual and a perennial is an annual you plant every year and a perennial is going to come back for you the following year. So I usually don't plant a ton of these. Um, I think probably I haven't started my own perennials by seed or um, annuals by seed yet, flowering ones. Probably when I do that then I will plant more of them. But since I go to the nursery and I buy them, I don't do a lot because they're expensive. So uh, the, one of these costs about $4 Canadian. Um, approximately and I think I bought 36 or so of these in the old wagon that I have that I'm going to show you it's something that I just love it's an original wagon from this property from about a hundred years ago I put some old lick tubs so cattle protein lick tubs and I drilled some holes in the bottom put some rocks in the bottom and then filled those with dirt and I fill those with annuals and they sort of spill over the side of the wagon in the summertime and it looks really beautiful. So that is something I'm going to do today. So I'm just going to show you guys um, how I do that. I take out, I take, um, I have some old soil from last year in there and I just add in some rabbit manure with some um, slightly composted hay. I just kind of dig in there, mix that in, cover it back up again and then plant my plants right in there. And that way I don't need to fertilize throughout the summer. Generally with annuals, you wanna fertilize every couple of weeks just to keep them bright, especially with things like this. So these ones I just bought from the nursery, these baskets, they're beautiful. <laughs> so with these ones, you do wanna fertilize them because they don't have a lot of space in here. You can't really fit anything else, any like manure or anything like that, for instance. So using like a liquid fertilizer, you can even make a compost tea, which I will show a video of in the next couple of weeks and use that to keep these nice and bright and, um, and lively. Otherwise they just, they kind of get a little, little um, dull and they don't flower as much when you don't fertilize them. So I guess let's get to it. Through this gate, this is what I'm gonna be doing today. So there's the front gate entrance to our house. So what I'm going to do is, as you can see in here, there's all the old bits from last year. So I'm going to clean these out, all three of them, and then I have a couple out in the front here. So I'm going to clean these out and, um, and put in some composted, slightly composted, rabbit manure and old straw. So you can see that in there. So I'm gonna mix some of that in down below just to give some extra feed to these. I don't actually usually feed my annuals over the summer. I know you're supposed to, but the rabbit manure seems to do the trick. So that's what we're going to be up to today. Okay, so I'm up inside the wagon now and I'm just gonna rip out all of the dead plants from last year. Last year I had petunias in here, but I also had nasturtiums and sunflowers. So out these come. All right, <laughs> gotta get the hair out of the way. So just mix all this up really well. And I pull a bunch of it to the side. And then I take some of my rabbit manure and I put that in. And I put it in a couple probably about uh, three or four inches down so that it's far enough down that it doesn't it's you know you can cover it up with some nice look nicer looking dirt on the top because it doesn't look very attractive and um, also but close enough to the surface that the roots are going to be able to reach it no problem so then I cover that back up again dig up the other side And then same thing again, grab some more of that nice manure, put it all in and then cover that all up. And then I take some of my flowers, look at the color of that, isn't that beautiful? And then I put in some holes to place them in. I am going to put, let's see, one, two, three, four, five 
of these plants around the outside. So you just take them out like that. You can pull them from the top as long as you're gentle or tip it from the side and give the bottom a little squeeze and then it just comes right out. You don't want to cause a ton of disturbance to the roots. Stick it in. Push the dirt around and then push it down nice and firmly. So when you first put plants like this into a planter, it's always a little bit discouraging because you'll put them in and it'll look like not a lot of anything. There'll just be a few little tiny plants in there. But don't be discouraged because it'll only take a couple of weeks for everything to really get going. And these grow surprisingly fast, especially if you have a little bit of heat. So we put them all in like that, push them down. And you can put these pretty close together. And if, if you are feeding it like I am by putting um, some manure, composted manure in to your bins, or if you're gonna be feeding it with some form of liquid fertilizer throughout the summer, then you can pack them in even tighter because they're gonna be getting that extra feed. So just like that, it looks... So these ones, when I saw these ones, they're like a corally pink color. It's not gorgeous. So what I'm gonna do with these is fit them in between here. So again, just to take these out, give it a little squeeze on the bottom and they just pop out. Just be gentle, but you don't have to worry that much. They're pretty hardy. I shouldn't say they're not hardy to weather. They do, petunias is particularly do not like the cold but they, you know, a little bit of rough handling is not gonna kill them. Bury them in. So bury them just to the top of where the roots are. Don't bury them further than that. Push them in, just like so. Okay, so up above there is where I have my petunias. Horses, deer, everybody loves petunias, so those have to stay out of reach. But down at the end here, I have a flower bin there, and then I have another one at the other end. And those ones, I'm going to use marigolds. Marigolds are, I like the smell of them, but it is definitely a really strong smell. And the deer just don't like them. Neither do um, the horses or the cows. Sorry guys, just trying to get this all angled right. So these, this is the color I chose. I think those are really pretty. So if anybody has any other recommendations on um, plants that particularly cows don't like, please let me know in the comment section below because I'm always on the hunt. And these are pretty, but they don't grow very big. So I wouldn't mind to have something in here that grew a little bit higher than these do. But it still looks nice, I think. Push it all down. And these little guys are a little bit hardier than the petunias are as far as cold goes. We're still getting some chilly nights here. So hopefully these are all gonna be okay. Normally, this is the weekend I plant. I plant May long. I usually have everything in the ground um, by the end of this weekend. I don't know if I'll be as successful this year getting that done because I have tons of stuff going on, things going on, but there, that looks nice. So we'll go around to the other side and we'll do the same thing over there. So I'm all finished planting our plants here. I'll show you what I've done. Got baskets hanging up. And on the walls here between the windows, I want to figure out something to put there. I thought some of those big metal um, cut out dragonflies, sunshines, flowers, something like that. And 
I wanted to know if anybody has any suggestions on how I can cover up these. I thought maybe planting hollyhocks or something that would be tall that they meter readers would still be able to read the meters, but it would block them from view, from view at least a little bit. So I stuck some of the flower pots there. I've got one over there. I'll just show you this view from by our porch. So our porch goes up like that. That's the front entrance to the house. There's an ent another entrance that the kids use mostly downstairs. And then there's a big deck out the front. And then down there, you can see those little white pipes that are sticking out of the ground there. That's for my root cellar. So the gate for the root cellar is over here. So we walk down this way and then go around. And my clothesline, which I have to guiltily admit that I don't use that often. We do so much laundry in this house that it's just not, I just don't have time to hang things on the line. I wish I did though. All right, everybody, thanks so much for watching. I hope you liked this video, and if you did, please be, give it a big thumbs up, subscribe below for more content from us, and leave us a comment. And I just wanted to thank everybody for all the nice comments that we've been getting and the nice feedback we've been getting on our projects. It's super encouraging. And in this world that can sometimes seem kind of dark if you're following the news or news anywhere in the world, it can seem like it's full of not awesome people. But my experience has been that there's actually a lot of kindness out there in the world, and I really appreciate it, so I just wanted to pass that on. Thanks. See you soon.